Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is episode 126 of Child Care Rockstar Radio, featuring Justin Black. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm so excited to have you with me. I am Chris Murray, your host. And in today's episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio, we meet a wonderful young man, uh, entrepreneur and author, and someone who is out to make a mark in the world and make it better. And that is Mr. Justin Black. Justin and his wife, Alexis, are authors, speakers, and business owners, and together they've published an award-winning, best-selling book, Redefining Normal, How Two Foster Kids Beat the Odds and Discovered Healing, Happiness, and Love, and that book has impacted over 10,000 individuals and families worldwide. So Justin is quite a unique human. He came up through the foster system, and he and his wife both did that separately and they found each other. And it's an incredible love story that you're gonna hear all about in today's episode. They talk about the work that they're doing in their redefining normal company. And their mission is to identify generational patterns and reduce trauma through the work that they're doing with youngsters and adults and leaders. And so we talk a little bit about uh, the layers of trauma, the layers of generational patterns, how your upbringing and your story and your surroundings impact you as your identity of a human being. Um, We talk about the foster care system and the ways that these two amazing humans are seeking to improve and change what goes on, and a lot more. So stick with me on this episode. It's an awesome one. And I want to quickly tell you about something that we've got going on. If you're listening to this real time, this episode is coming to the world on the first or second day of June 2022. And June 3rd, the final day of our early bird ticket sale for the Child Care Success Summit 2022 in Nashville. So within 24 to 48 hours, if you're listening to this when it's just releasing, this is your chance, guys. Uh, This is the final BOGO opportunity. And we have been announcing speakers all week, all, all over the last few weeks. And we have four amazing keynotes announced now that include Hal Elrod, Andre Norman, (laughs) <laughs> Tim the trainer and Lisa Nichols. So we have an incredible fabric and huge amount of content and expertise in terms of the way that these speakers approach their world, improve the world, tell their motivational, inspirational stories, and so much more. And you get the chance to come and meet these amazing speakers, uh, potentially have a meet and greet with them, take a photo with them. If you're in the Child Care Success Academy, you get a VIP level access to these speakers with photos and just the chance to meet these incredible humans. So it's quite the lineup, potentially the most powerful lineup that we've ever had. And we're going to be in Nashville, October 19th to the 22nd. This is your final chance to get the buy one, get one deal, the free ticket deal. It ends on Friday, June 3rd at midnight. So this is your chance. Summit.com. Final buy one, get one free ticket opportunity with the early bird special and so many more bonuses coming your way with your ticket. So I cannot wait to see you in Nashville in October. Without any further ado, let's dive right in to episode 126 with Justin Black. Enjoy everyone. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. This is Chris, your host, and I am thrilled to introduce you to my awesome guest today, Mr. Justin Black. How are you, Justin? Hi, you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be on here and just excited to talk to you. Fantastic. 
So a little bit about you and your wife, Alexis, you guys are authors, speakers, and business owners, and we're going to dive into your mission and your book and your company and learn more about you. And you have impacted thousands of individuals and families with the work that you're doing. And so I'm really excited to have you here at Childcare Rockstar Radio. So tell us, where are you based? Where are you right now? So yeah, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Um, still, I still live in Michigan right now. I'm outside of Detroit. Live. I went to Western Michigan University, so that's uh, where I live right now uh, in Kalamazoo. So decided to stay in Michigan and stay in Kalamazoo after I graduated from Western. So that's where I'm located. Very, very good. And tell us a little bit about your background. Um, where did y'all kind of? come into this journey and tell us, just give some highlights of uh, what you do and, and who you serve. Yeah, of course. So myself, uh, I'm from Detroit, as I mentioned, and I'm a foster care alumni. And I've grown up in Detroit pretty much my, almost my entire life up to like 18 to 19 years old before going to college. Uh, Alexis is from Flint, Michigan. She entered the system, a foster care system around 13 years old. And we both met at Western Michigan University at a foster care program called the Cedar Scholars Program that supports youth in higher education with uh, campus coaching, funding, and a bunch of other things. So we met during that program and really just hit it off and, uh, immediately, you know, just start talking and, and build a relationship and a friendship. And then two years after that, we got engaged. Two years after that, which was 2020, we got married and a little bit about the work that we do now and how this all came about is being a foster care alumni. You know, we've had mentors and great people around us just kind of tell us, you know, about all the amazing things that we're doing and who we are and how we need to kind of package this to deliver it to people into the world in one way or another. And we're trying to figure that out for the longest. How can we do that? How can we, you know, talk about this concept of where we are now based on where we were before? And there's so much of it went to our mindset and not only just about us as individuals. And this story is not just about us, but more or less about um, how uh, so many individuals, communities and families have been stuck in a certain way of thinking and, uh, around trauma and let, allowing trauma to become our normal and become who we are and our identity and become our culture. So, uh, so much of our lives is made up of that as children and teenagers. And as we look back of uh, people we knew, some of our family and so many others who we could relate to, um, they've grown up in that normal as well. And it hasn't always turned out to be the best. So we were fortunate enough to be around people who allowed us to redefine our normal, change our mind and change the ways we and ways in which we thought of ourselves and our future. And now uh, using our lives as example, displaying that normal, where we, how we grew up before, and the process of how we change that normal and redefine it, so to speak, uh, in the book and in our lives and in general. We want to teach other people the ways of doing that as well and give them strategies and techniques and different things that, they, that can help them to change their generational uh, patterns and their generational success overall. Mm. I love that. So diving right into that, your book is called Redefining Normal, How Two Foster Kids Beat the Odds and Discovered Healing, Happiness, and Love. Uh -huh. And so tell us a little bit more about the key beliefs and, and things that you really want to try to get across in your book, Redefining Normal. What, what are some of the key takeaways that people um, that you're seeking to, for people to, to have with it? Yeah, of course. So one of the biggest things that we want to help people do is identify uh, generational patterns and generational trauma and identify and with a with a purpose to create generational success. So, so much of our lives, not only just us, but even if you've grown up in a two parent household, you know, there could be some type of, of debt building habits, some type of bad financial plan, some type of communication issues between you saw between your mother and your father, uh, communication issues you saw with your parents, with you or other people. And then maybe on the worst end of things where there may be some addiction issues, some mental health issues, some some cycles of homelessness and so many other things that can go into generational patterns and cycles. And what we're really doing is challenging individuals to identify 
what has been generational in my family that has really plagued me from being successful and plagued me from being who I need to be for myself, being able to build friendships and romantic relationships and really grow professionally. So we want to challenge individuals to just sit down and think about that in their lives, what has really gone on generationally within my family, and really try to create or build on top of or create new generational practices and habits that start with their core principles and values, and really express that from there. I love that. That's very, very powerful. We're going to dig into that even more. But before we do, I want to ask you a little bit about your home life with Alexa. Tell me what you got going on right now, what's going on at home. And I'm also going to have you share a fun fact that is a little known fun fact, something that not a lot of people know about you, Justin. So Mm -hmm. share some personal stuff if you don't mind. Yeah, some personal stuff. So (laughs) this year, it feels like uh, every two years I've known Alexis, there's been some type of big milestone in our lives. Like I said, in 2016, we got together. 2018, we uh, got engaged. 2020, during the pandemic, we got married. And 2022, we're expecting our baby. So, (laughs) and it was was pretty fun. We did a gender reveal a few days ago. We found out we're having a baby girl. So, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting right now. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just an exciting time in our lives. So just to continue to build on the redefining normal family and bring in baby black into the world. It's, it's an exciting <laughs> time for us. That is so much fun. Are you guys working on baby names right now? Now that you know that it's going to be a daughter. Oh yeah, we we had uh, some baby names for a girl, baby names for a boy, uh-huh. and we had pretty much our top name set in stone already. Okay. We're not well, don't to tell, reveal. don't tell. We're not ready yeah. to reveal yet. No. <laughs> no, 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 don't tell. Good. But uh, we have we have them. I feel like pretty much set in stone. Like when I talk to her, when I talk to her belly, you know, I always say the name and everything. So I think we have the names pretty much set in stone. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. Huge congrats to you. That's a cool thing that every two years you've got like this milestone pattern going on. So that's really, really fun. And I remember, and I know every parent that's listening to this podcast remembers how it felt to be expecting your first child and how exciting it was. So I will be sending you lots of love and hugs and prayers, um, as, as she is born. So that's yeah, thank really you. very, very cool. You You're that, welcome. You. <laughs> and then do you want to share some, uh, some other kind of a fun fact about yourself? Anything that you can think of? besides? Yeah, that? of course. I mean, one thing that I love to always talk about with, as it relates to me and Alexis is that we've done 13 study abroad while in college. Hmm. And wow. we were fortunate enough to travel to roughly 30 different countries throughout our lives while in college and created a study abroad program. We love to travel. Travel is is a huge part of our lives. We've been to different Asian countries, European countries, African countries, South American countries, of course, North America. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) yeah, so, you know, um, it's it's just really been a blessing to be able to do that. And now I'll always encourage, you know, other people, other foster youth, other black men and women, and just people in general to try to have that experience of traveling and and studying abroad. And I can't wait till I, I get I'm able to travel again. And my my dream is to try to take our baby abroad and just have like one year where we like educate them or, or like like educate them on the move while we're traveling and everything to different countries. That's yeah. just a dream of ours that we really want to do. So yeah, that's really cool. I've known a few families that have navigated that and pulled it off, especially with multiple children. It ain't easy, but it's an amazing gift that you can give your children if, if you do that. So I I love I love that. That's fantastic. So tell me about your foster journey a little bit. I'm sure you had people during this early part of your journey in your life that were mentors and had a big impact on you and really helped propel you to see what was possible for you and Alexis. So if you might share people that have had a big impact on your life. Yeah, I mean, it's the people who've had an impact on my life. It's been it's been so many people who've had an impact on my life is it's hard to name a few, but it, I would say in different stages and segments of my life, there have been there's all God has always placed the right people in my life when I needed them. And, you know, even when I felt alone, when I felt like giving up on, in certain situations, he's always provided those people who that I've needed. So 
in my early years, you know, first, you know, even though I've grown up in a child welfare system, I'm always thankful and grateful for my parents, my biological parents that they have, they gave, they gave birth to me and, you know, they gave birth to me, they brought me into this world. So I'll, I'll always be grateful and thankful for them. And even though they, they dealt with addiction issues, they dealt with so much throughout my entire life that, you know, I have had to grow, I had to grow a sense of empathy for them in understanding that, you know, they've gone through things in their life and their own trauma. So my parents have, have gone through their own forms of trauma that they unintentionally passed down to us, which it was unintentional. So I always have to be grateful and thankful for them for first just bringing me into this world and doing what they can do to a certain degree. And then from there, you know, I've had social workers who've been active and supportive in my life who do the little things or sometimes go above and beyond just to help and support me. Like I remember in Detroit and Wayne County, uh, I was one of the only youth to receive funds to for my first car. And that's something that most foster youth are supposed to receive if you're able to, if you're advocating for yourself to get it. But the state and, and specifically in Detroit, in that county, it was it was a pretty lackadaisical, not as, you know, putting forth the effort to support the youth. And I was always on it and my social worker was always there to support me. So I was one of the only youth to receive those funds that year to receive my car. And, you know, it's, it's things like that. It's mentors who helped me get to college, who told me when I had like a 1.9, 2.0 GPA, you know, they told me that you can definitely go to college. You smart enough to do it. I see the I see the wisdom and, and I see so much in you that you can definitely do this. And they encouraged me to do that when I didn't believe I could do it myself and being able to be the first in my family to graduate college. And they believed in me to do that. They believed in me to graduate uh, debt free, you know, and help me find a scholarship and opportunities and everything and so many people through specific moments in my life whether it's mentors it was pastors whether it was, it was so many people it's hard to name but I've always felt that I had the necessary people in my life to get me where I need to be and now I'm at the point where I want to contribute that to other people mm -hmm. do you recall being in preschool at all or in a child care setting and having any hopefully positive experiences from your preschool memories, or I don't even know if you went to preschool. Yeah. Preschool memories, uh, trying to think. So <laughs> preschool memories, I was, I was a huge mama's boy. So this is back when I lived with my biological parents. So I was a huge mama's boy. And I remember being dropped off at school for the first time. And for some reason in my head, I thought like, there's no way that my mom is leaving you know, I, I for some reason thought that she'll be there with me the whole time while I was uh -huh. in school. And then she kind of dropped me off and then she was getting ready to walk away. She's like, all right, I'll come back later to get you. I'm like, wait, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> and so that was one of my I hated preschool because I was always away from my mom. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was the thing. So that was one of my memories. And, you know, I love nap time. <laughs> right. You know, I love nap time. They need to implement that in like middle school, high school nap time. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Because uh, school hours are too long. But uh, yeah, those are just small things, you know, um, miss my parents and, you know, just playing around on the playground was always fun. So small things like that. Yeah. Well, I think that that's a great point is that kids come to preschool environments and experiences at all levels of acceptance and whether or not they're, you know, more shy and introverted or they're, you know, quote mama's boys, or they are just, they jump right into it because they just love it and they're naturally outgoing and gregarious and don't have any fear around it. So I think for the professionals listening, they're nodding their heads because they deal with kids all day long at all levels of that acceptance level and that spectrum, if you will. So um, thanks for sharing that. And let's talk a little bit about your company. So you've also got a enterprise that has developed from your book and from your speaking and tell us more about your company and what you do. Um, is it, is it called redefining normal is the company as well, or tell yeah. us more about that. Okay. So the, the business is called redefining normal. And with this, we it started with the book, Redefining Normal, How Two Foster Kids Beat the Odds and Discover Healing, Happiness and Love. So we have so many themes and conversations and topics within this book where we dive into our personal lives and then talk about that process of redefining our normal, as well as challenging others to do the same. But it was bigger than a book 
we felt like we started to go on podcasts and do more and have these conversations to where we wanted to really, you know, continue this conversation and really break this down so people where it's digestible for people, where people can really receive what we're trying to say. So we decided to turn this into a into a thing where people can come and have these conversations where we can teach and train people on what we've learned, not only just in our personal lives, but accumulating all this information from counselors, from different foster parents, from different teachers and different other professionals within mental health and uh, identifying different statistics and different things that are holding back individuals and families and trying to break that down so we can all come to a I would say uh, not one solution, but all see how we can contribute to overcoming the problems in our lives as individuals and then as a community as well. So now since uh, late 2020, we've been traveling around the, the country doing workshops, trainings and presentations and, and speeches around ideas of redefining normal themes around it of mental health community building, you know, your core principles and values, relationship building, and, and so many other components that go into who we are and our identity. And ultimately around just creating generational success and identifying generational trauma. So we've done this for roughly two, over two, roughly two years now. And now it's just been a, a blessing just to continue this conversation and, and make this an entire thing where this is what we do full time now. So it's been an, a huge blessing and we've sold roughly 8,000 books now as, as self-published authors and really just, just having things come full circle and trying to help and support other people now. That's awesome. I love that. Let's talk about related to the foster care system, because a big part of your story is, is that. And so tell me if you and Alexis are, you know, what are you guys doing around bringing that message forward, helping to give back to foster care kids, helping to further that system in some way to make it more successful and to impact that system. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so throughout our journey in foster care, you know, I entered the system at nine years old and I talked a little bit about the help that I've received from so many other people. So we've identified, you know, certain programs and, and individuals that have helped us be, become who we are. So with the Cedar Scholars Program at Western Michigan University, with the Insoro uh, Scholarship Program, which is based in Atlanta, but it's pretty much a national program, and so many other programs that are supporting foster youth aging out, uh, foster youth um, who are children, and so many other uh, populations of foster youth that they're supporting. Uh, we donate portions of our book sales and a lot of our income for our uh, company overall to those programs like the Insoro Foundation, like Hope Packages, which is based in Michigan, like the Cedar Scholars Program, or other foster care based organizations looking to support children in foster care, supporting teenagers and those aging out as well. So a large portion of our book sales, large portion of the income we get for our company goes to these organizations to continue to work, as well as just the work we do in general, you know, training the foster parents that are out there training the advocates, the social workers that are out there based on our experiences, based on how they can build intentional relationships with the people that they're serving and also do self-reflection on who they are in our identity and understanding their triggers where they can grow as individuals and taking care of themselves and trying to surround themselves with a community that can support them as they go along the fostering process. So including all this information into our workshops and into our trainings to support them. And I don't know, a lot of attention goes to the youth themselves, but we can't pour from an empty cup. So we really focus a lot of our attention on the parents themselves and the adults. I love that. That's absolutely 100 percent spot on because we have to help and, you know, skill up and level up the parents and the families that are taking these kids in as well and, and help uh -huh. them fill their cups so it can just be a better high quality experience for these kids overall. Uh -huh. So I love, love, love that. People that are listening run child care centers and preschools, uh -huh. and they are both in a managerial role as a director or the owner. Uh -huh. And so people, uh, I, I'm wondering if you have any guidance around 
um, how our listeners might find their true calling and might find their why, because you guys obviously have a really strong why. You have a platform that is meaningful to your story. How can people dig into that? Like, are there different things that you you and Alexis have done to get in touch with that why and make it more powerful that people might be able to model from your example? Mm hmm. Yeah, of course. First, I think that's a great question. Just being able to understand your why, you know, understanding your why, it, like you said, it, it really is going to drive you and help you do the work that you do. But understanding your why can can to, uh, to understand your why. First, you need to dig deep into, you know, what was that initial moment? that inspired you to do the work that you, you're doing? You know, did you talk to someone? Did you hear a statistic? Mm -hmm. Did you, did you hear a statistic? Did you talk to someone? Did you, would you, were you in an environment that really touched your heart and, you know, it was unshakable, you know, that feeling was unshakable. It was like, you know, that, that person, that child that I saw, that, that person that I talked to, this conversation keeps coming in my head or on my heart. So there's an emotional connection to it. And then after the emotional connection, you kind of put, put the physical work into it. And after, you, you know, you have something that's really tugging on your heart, you know, then you can follow that up with the actions, with the strategies, with the techniques to really try to make an impact on communities and families, but really taking a deep dive into the statistics. Uh, and, and I'm still and doing the work now. We have statistics throughout our book that people can see. You know, before each chapter, we have book or we have statistics before each chapter in our book. But now I'm starting to find out even more statistics that make me more inspired to do the work that we're doing. When you hear about the number of sex traffic victims that come from the foster care system, I believe it's about uh, more than 80 percent. Of, and I maybe I don't want to give specific numbers, but I, in general, it may be between 75 to 80 percent or above of sex traffic victims in the U.S. come from the foster care system. Mm. Large numbers of people who are in the prison system uh, today come from the foster care system and so many other things uh, that go that that stem from uh, neglect at home stem from not having parents, not having a strong community. So really what we do is try to focus in on the root of things. And so many parents and families are are uh, don't can't support their children because they just don't have the resources, they don't have the information, or they don't have the means to support themselves. So trying to get to the root of things is is really what's always tugging on my heart. So for in, other individuals listening to this, I would just encourage them to dive into those statistics, have those conversations, and really understand what keeps tugging on your heart to to come back to to continue to have those conversations to really do research on and really put that action to that emotion that keeps pulling you to a certain cause. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I love you know tapping back into the original inspiration or the thing that was, you know, the original thing that drove you into the path that you're on and getting in touch with that again. I think sometimes we lose our passion mm -hmm. and I think re getting reignited with that original passion is fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. What is other than a new baby? <laughs> what is next for you and Alexis on this journey that you're on? Where where are you headed? Oh, man, there's so many things <laughs> and ideas that we have. So first, we have uh, along with the Redefining Normal book, we've been fortunate enough to also publish the Redefining Normal uh, companion guide, which goes along with the book where we take our lives out of the, the situation. We take our lives out of the book where individuals are able to ask themselves the questions that we had to ask, go through the scenarios, the activities that we had to go through. And it goes along with the book. So I would definitely suggest you read the book and then go through the companion guide back to back. So you're able to ask yourself those questions and go through the redefining normal process yourself. So we had that on our website and coming up, we want to create a faith-based uh, a faith-based companion guide where those who are seeking to understand not only just themselves, but that the role that they play in the world and how uh, their identity and who they are is a, can directly connect to or is a direct uh, contribution to some of the issues in the world as far as those who've experienced trauma. So first understanding yourself, who you are, and then understanding how who you are and your purpose directly ties to contributing to communities 
and those who've experienced trauma. So that's coming up as well. And then somewhere down the line, either later this year when Baby Black is born or next year, we want to create a children's book around a lot of these themes and topics around the mental health and everything, but it were in, in a lot of the themes surrounding redefining normal, but that's something down the line. But for right now, people can uh, reach out to us and connect on our website for the redefining normal book, the companion guy, they can get some merch and, and, you know, get some sweaters, some, some redefining normal clothing and all that good stuff. And they can just book us for their next event or conference. So that's coming up for us right now. And um, we're traveling a lot in May for national foster care awareness month. And we're no, we're on the road right now. So we're doing as much as we can before baby black gets here. So. All right. I love that. Um, we would love to have you at one of our future conferences. So we'll definitely reach back out to you guys. So oh, of speaking course, of, you love it. yeah, love it. Love it. Uh, speaking of your website, tell us how people can find you and find more about your books and your merch and all that stuff. Of course, definitely. <laughs> so uh, they can find us at redefiningnormal.com. That's where you can find all things redefining normal as far as our books, our clothing, booking, everything redefining normal. You can find us at redefiningnormal.com. Uh, for social media, you can uh, add us on Facebook uh, for the more mature audiences, I guess, on Facebook for at Redefining Normal Movement. And for the younger audiences, we're on TikTok. <laughs> you know, we're trying to we're trying to stay active. So we're on TikTok and Instagram at re.definingnormal. Uh, feel free to email us at info at re-definingnormal.com and stay connected in, in any way that you can. You know, we want to be there to help and support as many people as we can. So cool. Love that. My final question for you is if you could have a gigantic billboard to wow. send a message to the world, what would it say? Ooh, wow, that's a, <laughs> that is a, a huge question that I, I need a, like a quick minute to think about to it. Think about. Yeah. So <laughs> if I had a huge billboard with a message to say to people, I don't know what it would say, but something that encourages them to be intentional with every day that they're alive you know, and I don't know if you had a chance to read the book at all, but I lost my mom in 2020. Uh, and, you know, people are losing their lives all the time. So be intentional about not only just their life and their day to day life, but how their life is connected to other people, you know, like mm -hmm. our good decisions, as well as our bad decisions, not only just impact us, but impact those around us as well as generations to come. So something around that, and, you know, that's what Redefine Normal does. So, you know, <laughs> pointing them back to us. But um, yeah, just being aware and not just so, uh, uh, you know, being more aware and intentional about who they are in their day-to-day -day life and yeah. how their words and actions impact them and other people. So something around that in that area. I don't know the exact words, you know, something around generational something, but yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And I really, those are, that's one of the themes of my life is, you know, carpe diem, seize the day, squeeze the most you can out of every single day. Don't, don't take it for granted. Um, I think we get into like auto automatic robot mode yeah. where we just kind of live in our routines and our patterns and it's kind of unconscious and mm -hmm. unintentional a lot. And so I love what you said, because I think everybody can use that and really dive into that more deeply every single day and try to keep that front of mind as much as you can and be conscious about every moment of every day. Maybe not every moment, but certainly, you know, telling people you love them as many times as you can. Don't uh, take that for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and just being kind and, and being helpful and helping people. Um, so I love all of those. Um, and those are, those are cliche things, but people don't understand how far that goes. You know, like right. just be kind. I know that's like so generic, like, oh, just be kind. But like really like the when you meet somebody and you talk to somebody like for the first time, they could be having the worst day possible, but simply somebody holding, holding the door for somebody, just, just smiling at somebody, just being that good energy, that good spirited person. You never know how that brightens up someone. And you know, someone's meeting you for the first time, you're gonna leave an everlasting impression 
on them. So try to leave a positive impression. You know, like I'm a very uh, godly and spiritual person. So when pe- when I when I meet people, they're you know not just meeting me, but I'm a representation of my entire family and so many other people behind me who support me. So I have to be aware and intentional about that, and just encouraging other people to do the same. Yeah. Great. Well, Justin Black, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. Uh, The book is Redefining Normal, How Two Foster Kids Beat the Odds and Discovered Healing, Happiness and Love. You can learn more about their company, what they do, their book, all the things they offer at re-definingnormal.com. And uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to be on the podcast today. No, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. And, you know, I can't wait to see all the amazing things that come from this. Great. Well, me too. And uh, hopefully we'll get to meet you in person and your lovely wife and baby, maybe yep. in the future. <laughs> um, so good luck with everything you got going on. And um, everybody that's listening, thank you so much for being here for another episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio and take good care of you. And if you can take good care of another person too. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care and God bless.